there, my name's Vince from MyMakeVince.com and in this video today we're going to be attempting to fix another bang on of some products. So this one here is a tape player and also a recorder as well from 1975 to 1978 I think it was. Now it looks like it's nicely made, we've got a wood finish up the top here. It looks very 70s, it kind of reminds me it came out at a similar time to the Atari 2800. And it does look like a bit of a woody, doesn't it, with all the wood effects on it here. So obviously that was the style at the time. But all this at the front here is nice cold metal. So although it might not look that styly, it certainly feels quality. So I got it off eBay for a grand total of £19.95. That's just under 20 UK pounds. And you can see it there. It's a BO cord, 1100. It says spares or repair. Now, confession to make, I have actually dropped this and it didn't make a healthy noise when it dropped. So the condition of it now is definitely worse than when I actually bought it. But the issues that I've seen so far, as in uh, the condition right now, so what I'm going to be trying to repair is this little metal thing has come off the top here. You can see a little bit of aluminium. Obviously, that's not going to be any biggie because that's just going to need gluing back into place. But look here, the on and off switch here, here it doesn't latch in. So with these other ones, they go in. And then when you want them off, you press them again and they go out. So that should be the same with this button. But look, it's not doing that. It's not latching itself in. Also, it's incredibly loose. When I hold it in and it's plugged in, it's not plugged in at the moment, but when I plug it in, the light does come up here. So it looks like there's power. But look here, I can't open this up because when I press pause here, can you see it's hitting against this? This whole thing looks like it's been pushed forward because if we look at the top, look at the lines here. It looks like the whole thing's been pushed down a bit because we have a lovely line along here, a nice line across this bit. But all I, I think all these things look like they've been pushed forward. So I need to kind of get them all to be pushed back and then I'll be able to eject it. So you play. Yeah, they need to go much more down. Then let's try pushing it in. There you go. Right, so that's gone down there. Yeah, that's what it should go. Hold on. So, ooh. Yeah, okay, well it's going there, but look, it's stuck now. Pause is definitely not right. So that should be easy enough, I would say. I think the biggest challenge here is gonna be the on and off switch, but as well as that, it's trying to get into it. Now there's various screws and stuff down the back. Also, the, uh, the wood at the bottom here is broken, and also the wood on the side is damaged, and there's stains up here as well. The wood on this side is just damaged at the front here, and we have a little bit missing from here, so not really much I can do about that. Hopefully I'll be able to glue those bits down. Uh, this one here is a Type 2612, so that will probably give me the exact age if I was to look that up. Uh, but yeah, I mean, there's various screws around the place, but also, annoyingly, there is screws missing, so it looks like maybe an, a, a repair might have been attempted on this beforehand, not too sure. But let's take it apart and let's see what the inside looks like. Hopefully, being the fact that it's a B&O product and it weighs an absolute ton again, I'm hoping it's going to be pretty good quality. Let's get started. Now I've just got it plugged in and check this out. When I hold this in, can you see? It's definitely coming on, which is good. And also I can hear this fan. Little fan. It's so heavy this thing. Little fan here. Whoa, whoa. God, I got scared there. Little fan here spinning as well. Right, let's unplug it. And let's see how easy it is to take apart. I'm just going to hold it in just in case there's any uh, power left in capacitors just to help uh, drain it a bit. Right, so I had a little look here and it definitely is loose up the top here. Can you see the screw that's missing? That is for the top. So I'm just going to undo this one, which looks more like a, like a tuning screw. I'm thinking it's not probably not the original screw from there. And then hopefully we can get inside it. There's no disassembly instructions on this one, but there is, uh, if you have a look at the screws here, can you see they're well and truly rusted through these ones on the leg. Yeah, that's going to come off. Oh, oh, look at that. Now, how's this going to come off here? Well, here we go. It's definitely sliding side to side. Ah, here we are, here we are. This one's stuck. Let me try to... There we go. So that does just clip in. I wonder how this thing comes out. Let me get a little pry tool thing. 
Let's see if these lever outwards. Oh, yes, they do. Excellent. Good thing about the B&O stuff is it's just made, especially from this era anyway, it's just made to be dismantled. That looks so nice. Already I'm liking it, and look at the cloth they've put there, presumably to maybe stop dust from going in there, or just to give it a nice finished look. I mean, you can almost see through it, but you got to admit, even that is nice, isn't it? We can give that a clean up afterwards because there's some weird stains on it. Okay, so this is what we have here. So now, how does this thing move forward and backwards? Where's the screws for this whole assembly? Look at all the caps in here. Let's just have a little zoom in and have a look around the place. So this here is the switch that's broken and also wobbly. So I've got to somehow sort that out. Have to take that out and have a look at it. We've got a uh, big old transformer thing here. So the power comes in from the cord here. It goes up to, let's have a look. Power comes in the cord here, goes up to the switch. Then back from the switch, it goes to this side of the fuse travels through the fuse, then goes through the transformer, and then comes out here. And also, have a look at all the wire in here. This really reminds me of telephone exchanges. So a lot of the um, a lot of the telephone exchanges, obviously all the wiring was, well, obviously some has been updated, but a lot of the wiring was done years ago, and they were all tied up with this kind of twine stuff. And look, can you see it's one continuous bit that's just wrapped around, brought here, wrapped around, brought round, and it's just really nice. Can you see how all that cable's rooted? So there's no cable clips or anything there. That's just all done with twine. That's lovely. That really is nice. Looking good. Right, let's just, uh, I mean that fuse must be working, but let's just do a quick, I can see another fuse here. Let's just do a quick continuity test. Fine. Fine. And I'm just going to check this is like the biggest cap in here, but even this is only 63 volts, but I'm just going to check that cap just for voltage. No, there's nothing in there at all, so I think I'm uh, I think I'm okay to be working on this. Right, so I suppose first thing we need to do is, should we worry about these buttons or should we worry about the switch? Maybe we should look into these buttons first of all. Now, how do you pull this out or push this in? So that needs to go out here, but even that's not, that's not closing. So it's either the middle thing here is in, which I don't think it is, I don't think that's in more than it should be. That looks perfect there. So it's this whole assembly that needs to be moved in so that the thing can be pushed down. So what's uh, what's holding this to the actual main board? Oh, is it these things at the front here? It's these things here. One there, and there's nothing on that side. Should there be one on that side? It's been held underneath as well, maybe by this here. Right, let me start undoing this little one here and see if that will move back, because we don't need to go back much. Oh, that's loose. That's really loose. Ah, that's loose. So that probably just needs, yeah, that just needs to be tightened. So let's loosen that more, and let's try to pry out It's not moving. No, it's still hitting. Uh, well, let's undo something at the bottom. Let's undo these two screws because maybe, do you know what, it's probably these four screws that hold it in. So let's just slacken them off.
Now let's see if that's going to move. Oh, I've just found a tiny little pin. Right, let's uh, leave that there. That may be of importance. I wonder if that's why that's not working. Okay, hold on. That seems to have moved it. Because I can see that there's a slight, you won't be able to see it in the camera, you might be able to, can you see a line across here? So it must have always been a very tight fit against here anyway, when you press it down, because you press it down with force but then it comes back a bit. And the repeated hitting of that down there is what's caused the marks across here. So if I can tighten it up in that position, well what I'll do is, let's put down the pause button and now I'm going to put a little bit of pressure down while I'm going to do up the screws at the bottom. And that might be all it needs. Right, that's working there now. Let's try to now do up this button here. The screw. Sorry, I'm doing all the wrong words today. <laughs> right, that's nice and tight now. I think that will do. Let's get a tape in. Play. Yeah, record goes down, so it would be, I presume, record and play. Or maybe it's just record. Oh, look at that, it throws the tape out at you. So look, you have to like load it, and it clips in, and then when you're finished, it ejects, the, you know, it actually offers the tape out. So even that's on a spring. Well, that's pretty nice. But what isn't nice is, now, I know being uh, a child that was around in the 80s, you've got to love the fact of the soft eject coming out like that. But that's a really violent eject, like really, really violent. You think, uh, you think it'd be nice if it was like just slow like that. But I think that is the actual design of it because there's just a big spring here and spring here. And yes, there's little pads that it dampens against here, rubber and rubber which still feels really soft, which is amazing. So it's not gonna do it any harm, it's just it's just not a nice it's not a nice action at all. It's too violent. Well I'm uh, I'm pleased with that. So now let's worry about this on and off switch and see what's uh, see what's happening. Also, so you don't have to listen to the archers anymore, don't say I never do anything for my, my subscribers because look what I went out and bought. I bought a classical tape. So now hopefully I won't get done for uh, copyright because most of these things will be in the public domain, which is fantastic, which is good. Well, let's, uh, let's see now, let's concentrate on this switch here. And then if I can get that working, we can worry about maybe gluing the top on and also gluing the, the wood at the side. Also, we can clean up the heads and stuff, can't we, with some IPA? and possibly put a bit of grease around the place. I can't even see where the belts are on this. Maybe the belts are underneath because it doesn't look like the belts are driven. There's no belts on the top there, is there? Oh, here we go. This is going to be, this is going to be, the, I thought that was just for the fan, but that must be the main motor that's actually spinning. The thing is the fan's spinning all the time. I wonder is that linked to the motor above or is that a separate little thing? That's, is that a separate motor feeding that one? Not too sure. I might not even have to get involved with any of that anyway. Okay, how are we gonna get this out? Right, again, I can see it's attached to the front part via this big lump of metal. And that bit of metal is not the switch going in and out. But I can see that there's a little screw here and here to hold in this. So I think what we have to do is unscrew it Clip off. Yeah, and there the wire's soldered on. So I might have to unsolder them. Let's, let's unscrew it to begin with. So the very fact it's loose is probably going to make it useful for me because it means will I be able to get to that other one to unscrew? Maybe. Let's get a long, let's get a long thin screwdriver for that. There we go, that's the other. Mm. 
And this is the switch. But how do I take that out now? Because that metal thing's in the way. I wonder how that's attached on. There we go. So it was just a pressure fit. So that's it there. I suppose what we need to work out is how this little switch works. So is there a way I can dismantle this without completely breaking it? It looks like there's clips at the back here. So if I undo them, I wonder whether that will pop it out at all. Is that just going to break it? And we've got clips at the front. Yeah, that's going to come. Let's do the same on this side. There. Right, I've got to be careful now because it might all spring out at me and I won't know where it goes back. So let's just ease that out there gently. Excellent. Right. So, how does this work? When we do the, oh, okay. So these are the two that go off to, for example, let's just call it the transformer. So these two are always live. So these two are the things that's coming from the mains. So we have 240 volts on here. Then when we press this, ah, oh, sh hmm. huh. should have thought that that might happen. When you press that in there, it was just knocking. These two things were then pivoting from here because uh, the middle, these two bits are always live, and then it will knock them against here. So that's uh, that's a bit annoying, but I should be able to get that back. Let's just see where all the bits went. Found it. So what I'm thinking is, the spring goes into there, and then the other side goes into here, and these are the things that hit against those things there under tension. And then when you push it, it's... Uh, I'm not sure. When we put it back together, we'll, uh, we'll find out. Anyway. I found the missing bits, so now let's find out how this actual switch works. So there's nothing there to say why it would lock into place, from what I can see. Right, what we've got on go is something weird going on up here. Is it to do with this thing in here? Does the pin somehow go in here one way and not the other way? Does the pin just need to be fitted? The pin just needs to be fitted in that hole in there. Problem is, it's like a, uh, it's a rectangle, it's not a hole. Let's have a look, that pin is weird, isn't it? So maybe, maybe that needs to go in there. Give it a go. Is that going to fit in there? Yes. It does fit in there. Maybe it needs to wobble side to side by going in to... I'm not going to turn it upside down, but the bit I showed you earlier. It looks very worn in there. Right, that's there. Oh, and is that to stop it... Is that to stop it falling... Would that be to put pressure on it downwards? Maybe I need to push that down more. No, now the pins come out. Let's push that down as much as it will go. That's really soft. I don't know whether that would put any pressure on it. Right, let's try that pin again. Right, so I think the head of the pin goes in here and does something fancy when you turn it in and out. It must work its way around that bit. So maybe I need to put some kind of grease in there. But let's, let's pop it in. I don't know why it came out in the first place. Because if it was all sealed, how did that come out? It doesn't make any sense. Well, we're in. Right, okay. Right, something else is just broken there now. That. Uh, 
Okay, hold on, hold on. That's locked. But then it popped out. Maybe. That's it. Okay, it's not unlocking, but maybe when it's all back together, it will. Because at the moment, this is bent really badly. There you go. I think we should try and put that back together. And uh, I should have probably put a little bit of... No, I'm not going to mess around with grease, just in case I mess up. Because of, obviously there's 240 volts here. So now let's work out what's, uh, what's going on here. Right, so I'm not going to do it, but you can see now that this is under pressure from the spring and the plastic bits. And when I push this forward, it's going to force these ones here to hit against these two. The dome side of it is the thing that's going to be hitting against this point here. So now that is back together. So what I need to do now is I need to try to get the cover back on and then see if it's actually going to work or not. In and in. Excellent, that clips in nicely. So now let's see if it's going to work or not. Yes, come on, come out. Oh, it doesn't want to come out though. Mm. At, at least it means it will work. It would just mean you have to control it via the actual plug turning it on and off from the, uh, the main socket. Now, why won't that come back out? Is it to do with this here? Do I need to prise this up a little bit? Let's lift that in. And it worked, didn't it, when I had it apart? One that is the pin in the wrong place. Maybe on the way in, the pin needs to be, for example, over the right hand side, and at this moment in time, it's over the left hand side. I think I've kind of proved that the pin is to do with it. Or is it because it's not pushed back together properly? There, right, it's out now. In, out. So maybe I'll just have to give it a little pull out to get it fully out. What the look is, it's holding in now. I just need to keep working it until it comes out. So let's just get our continuity tester and let's see if we've got continuity from one side to another. Now it's not working. It in. Yes, it is working. Okay, so about 20 minutes has passed because it was a nightmare trying to get these little screws through that hole and just use the magnetism of this and have it not wobble down like that to try to line it up with this. It's, it's, it's not an easy job to do. Now that I've done it once, now that I know what I'm doing, it'll be easier second time round. But unfortunately, when I pushed it back in, every time I pushed it in, it just popped straight, straight back out again. So it wasn't doing the same thing as it was when there was sort of no weight or anything on it. So what I've done is, I've looked up, I can actually buy one of these. There's a seller in Spain who looks like he's broken down one and he's selling off bits of it. So it's nine pounds something plus four pounds something postage. So looking at around about uh, 13 to 14 pounds. So of course, it's worth that rather than me spend all day on it. But remember, I paid 20 pound for the whole thing. So it seems a bit steep paying like 13 or 14 pounds for just one part of it when the whole thing is 20 pound and it's only worth 20 pound. So you'd be able to get similar ones to this working for not much more than 20 pounds. I'm not saying I'm not gonna get the switch. I haven't made up my mind yet, but I just wanna see if I can get this switch working better. So I'm happy if when I push it in, as long as it stays on, I'm happy then to pull it out to turn it off. I don't think that's such a, such a big deal. So what I've done is I've wrapped a cable tie around here because it fitted perfect. And then I've put another cable tie and another cable tie to try to put pressure down on the metal thing. 
because when there's no pressure on the pin, it's not working. I need pressure on the metal thing. But this metal is absolutely tiny because I think now where the pin goes in is just completely worn. But now, if you have a look, if I press it in now with the cable ties, there. Okay, that stays in and it goes off. Hold on, let's get that lined up right. There, on. Is it going to come off? There, off. On. Off. So maybe there's just a bit of a technique that I need to do. On. Off. <laughs> okay. It's better than it was, but it's still far from perfect. So now I'm going to try to get this uh, back in. Right, this is going to take another... Uh, Probably 20 minutes or so. Let me just let me just show you what I'm uh, what I'm attempting to do. So I'm getting this here. I'm putting this through here. I'm lining this up here, and then I'm having to try to put it back and line it up through the hole. There you go. Actually, now that I'm filming, that's going to work probably first time. Yeah. Okay. It's going in now. Okay. But I'm not going to do it fully tight because I need to do this side. I got lucky there. Let's see if I can get lucky again. The switch is still going to be wobbly though. I wonder if when they're new it was wobbly. Well, there you go. That's the luck of the camera. They both went in first time there. But that didn't happen to the, the go before. Now let's tighten them up fully. Now, so that's going to be like that. This is going to be on top there. So as far as I can see, I've got no problem there with the uh, with the cable ties. There. Now let's see. Excellent. That's gone in, and that is out. In. Come on, come out, yeah, out. So I've got to kind of flick it out. In, out. Excellent. Right, I think I am just going to run with that. So now I'm going to get the soldering iron. I'm going to solder these two wires on because with all my fiddling, they've come off. And then I need to try to sort out uh, the gluing off the wood at the side and this here as well. I'm just going to strip back a bit to get onto some fresh, fresh copper. Soon, I'm leaving quite early tomorrow morning. Undercover baby is what you ask of me. Soon, I'll be disguised. Shooting star, I'm without a safety net. Give me a ride. I'm going far beyond where the sun sets. Dear, I'm no longer scared. Well, I think what I'm going to do is get some IPA and I think I'm going to clean around all the the capstan roller and the tape head and stuff like that with a nice clean cotton bud. So what I do to begin with is I'll do the tape head first when the cotton bud's perfect and then I can do the capstan roller after that. So just a little bit of IPA, isopropyl alcohol. I'm on my way. So it looks like there's two tape heads here, one here and one here. And this would one be for one before recording or something. Going far beyond where the sun sets. Shooting star I'm without a safety net. Give me a ride. A fair bit of dirt and grime came off it. 
which I suppose is to be expected because dust is going to land on the top here and there's quite a big gap around the housing and here so uh, it is going to work its way in there well, I'm just going to be putting a tiny bit of uh, synthetic grease, Molico EM30L, and I'm just going to look to see where like the moving parts are. Obviously, not the uh, the tape there, not the things that are spinning the actual tape, but some of the other bits. And I'll only be putting tiny bits on as well. I just put it around some of the bits that I can see moving. Like for example, you see these bits here and these bits here. Really, I can put it back together now, can't I? Because everything else is going to be on the outside. So let's try and get it back together. It goes like that. So that's back in there. So now that can all that can be put back in, can't it? That's locked into place there. Now we've just got the one screw here. I need to uh, I need to find some, maybe some washers or something because that's not a, that's not a good fit there. Search through my massive box of leftover screws and things throughout the years, and I haven't got any washers small enough. But I have got these tiny spring washers. I think that's going to do fine because as long as it's bigger, as long as it's bigger. Excuse my foot. I just don't want to put pressure on my front buttons. Uh, as long as it's bigger than the hole here, which it is, then it will stop the screw from going into the hole. And also, I did find a suitable screw as well. So I'm just going to do this up. Right, that's it. And I got a, a new little screw from here. This is actually the front of uh, a master socket in the UK. So I've got loads of these size of screws. Excellent. There we go. That's gone in. That's gone in nice. I'm happy with that. I know it's silver instead of black, but that is now secured atop and it wasn't secured before. So that's okay. Now let's get some epoxy, I think, and stick this on here. I was going to think about just using double sided tape, but because it's already got glue on it, it's not perfectly flat anymore. So I think I'm going to get some epoxy on the go for that. Got some Gorilla Glue epoxy. The only thing is, I think I'm just about out, but hopefully I'll have enough for this one particular job. Just wearing gloves because this stuff stinks. So what it is is you mix uh, one part of one and one part of the other, but when you get to the end, they don't always come out in equal measures. There you go. That's going to be uh, that's going to be ample. I might do the wood with this as well because it's going from wood onto plastic. So I don't think I could use like PVA glue on that. Because this is against the plastic. So I think I'm just going to use some epoxy on that as well. Alright, there we go. Hopefully that will be okay. Now let's try to stick the side. Oh, 
Right, let's see if that's going to do it. Leave that for a bit, let it go a bit hard, and I'll try and wipe it up again. Try to get it more in place when it gets a bit more uh, tacky. Right, so I think once that sets, that will stay down. It's a shame that the bit's missing there, but there's not really anything I can do about that. Do you know what I might do on this bit? Because I haven't got any wood to replace it, I might get a little blade and I might just square it off to make it look like a, a perfect little kind of rectangle bit out of it rather than a chip. There you go. It doesn't probably look any bit better at all. It's just that before it looked like a full-on chip and now, yes, there's a piece of wood missing from it, but uh, when it's nice and square like that, it might not, your eye might not be drawn to it quite as much. Right, this bit here keeps curling up, so I'm going to put the weight on that side there and just leave it for a good 20 minutes or so. So it's the next day now, I let this dry overnight and the glue really has pulled the wood back into the plastic. So that feels completely solid now and also that side there has gone down nicely as well. So now I'm just going to give everything a nice good clean and try to get these weird stains out of the, uh, the wood and the metal as well. So I'm just going to be using a wet wipe and just a bit of elbow grease and let's see if it works. Right, so it has come up nice. All those stains have now gone from it. But understandably, the wood and also the metal is slightly faded, just from being 40 something years old. I think I'm just gonna try a little bit of wood polish on here. Just some kind of, you know, like uh, Mr. Sheen type thing. Oh, I found this in the cupboard, Pledge Multi-Surface, and it says here that it does wood as well. So uh, multi-surface can be used to clean all kinds of surfaces, sealed wood, glass electronics and more. So uh, let's use this. I think it's come up pretty good. I'm happy with that. The metal has quite a few scratches on it, but uh, there's not much that can be done about that because if you try to touch that up with paint, it's just gonna really stand out because you're not gonna get the exact same color. But uh, it's looking good. So now we have to turn it on, see if that power button is gonna stay in, and then we have to work out which pins we're gonna be using in the uh, amplifier, this one in here. So I think I might use the scope for that. So let's plug it in. Okay, that's good. Now, here we go, let's turn it on. Excellent. Brilliant, let's see if it's gonna turn off. I've gotta kind of use a flicking technique to turn it off. There you go. And if I was just to knock it, it doesn't look like it's coming off. It's still horrible, it's horrible action, and also it's horrible the fact that it's so loose, but I can't see any way of tightening up that, that, tightening that up inside apart from putting a wedge of kind of plastic or wood this side to stop it moving back. So I'm thinking that always wobbled from the uh, very beginning because even these ones you see are wobbly. So it must be just the way the way it was. Right, okay, so that's that. Now, let's uh, pop a tape in here. And actually, I can see it's, yeah, I can see it's spinning. Right, let's get a, uh, let's get a tape in. And let's go to play. 
That's definitely turning, but the needles are not moving. So the needles might be just for the, the recording level. Fast forward works and rewind works. So what I didn't see is where the belts were in this. I wonder if the belts are all hidden underneath it then, but it seems to be working. But the thing is, it might not be working right. The sounds might be wrong. It might be slow. Let's get a scope and let's now probe. Well, before I do that, how am I going to do this now? So basically, it's going to be hard to film, but I'm going to go in the holes here. So first of all, I need to find out which one is the ground. So can you see amplifier and mic? So I'm working on this one here because this is the one that's going to be producing the sound going out. The microphone is going to be bringing the sound in. So let's concentrate on this one to begin with. So let's just set our meter to continuity. So when we put the leads together, it beeps, yeah? So I'm presuming the bottom pin is going to be the ground. So let's just see. In Hold on. Well, that's ground there. These probes are too big. Let me get let me get my other meter. So we know that this screw here is ground, so let's go through the different holes on here. Just trying to do it so you can actually see what's going on. So this screw's ground, so let's probe in here. No, no, yes, no, no. So 100% that bottom one there is the uh, ground. So now what we have to do is, let's get the, let me use one of my leads here because there's a nice thin needle on it. Let's get this and let's see where the sound's being produced. So I'm going to leave it on AC. I'm going to turn this on. I need to put this to a ground. I'm just going to use this one here. And now I can probe the pins and see what's happening, see if I can see anything. All right, let's start at the top one here. Okay, so that top one looks like it's doing something. Do that one. That looks like it's doing something. Okay, ground. Ah, that looks different. And that looks different. So look, if you look here, these are both like flat line and similar to ground. Look, if I go on ground, can you see it's just straight? And if I go on this one, it's straight and this one's straight. But if I go on this one here, I'm getting movement. And if I go on this one, I'm getting movement. Let's see if we can go into that anymore. Right, so that's 0.2 volts. Right, okay. Uh, whoops, you know I don't know how to use scopes, but if you have a look here, if I go onto ground, you see it's just flat, and now if I go onto here, I'm definitely getting a signal that's moving around the place. So I think that these two are going to be my audio. So I'm going to set up a, a lead now, and basically just make my own little uh, connection. Turn this off for the time being. Okay, so I've just soldered up my 3.5mm uh, jack to it now. So I've just got the white into the top pin, the uh, red into the middle pin, and the ground into the bottom pin. I don't actually know which is left and right on here. So now let's uh, plug this into here, turn this on, and let's see if this thing is actually producing any sound. So I'm just going to plug it in and turn it on and let's press play. Oh, there we go. Excellent.
good news. Now we have to work out what's happening with the uh, record. Let me just put in a different tape, a recordable tape. This is the Archer's one that was in all my Walkman videos. Let's see now if I press record what's going to happen. So, look, it's lit up. Hold on. And the needle's deflected. So I have to press record and play to actually record. Perfect. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get uh, another source, put some music into it. And what I'm thinking is these pins are, are going to be the same, aren't they, on both of them? So these two must be the input pins. If these two are the output pins, these two must be the input. But this is on the amplifier. So let's do the two on the that one there on the mic. So let's, let's use the bottom on the ground. Let's just double check. I can't remember if I did that before. Let me just double check if that one is ground or not. And then we, uh, it's going to be ground, isn't it? Because why would they make them different? Let's just double check that here and the bottom one. Yeah, there we go. So the bottom one's ground. So I'm going to take it then. That's these two here are going to be the inputs. So let's put another cable with the ground there, the two on the this side here, and then uh, let's put. So let's feed some audio into it and see if we can record it. Well, actually, let's just see if the needles can move up and down because that should tell us when we move this to here because we've got left and right here. So I presume that must be left and right for the audio. Right, so you can see what I've done there. So now if we press play here and turn everything on, we should have the needles jumping. So let's uh, move that up there. Let's try to get a few things in shot. Okay, let's turn it on. That's on now. So I'm going to press play, but it will only liven up when I start pressing record here. So let's turn this on. Right, that's spinning up. And it's playing. So now if we go to, if I just press record, will it move? Let's turn it up here. No. No. So do I have to press play to even make the needles move? Am I definitely in there? Make sure nothing's shorting. But the needles are not moving. Oh, I have to press mic in here. Ha ha, there we go. I had to just press mic in at the front here. Right now. So let's see what happens when so this is the left side, and this is moving here. Okay, so let's put that around there. I don't know where it should be. Now let's up the right-hand side. Wow, that's working. I don't know if you can see because of the glare. Look at that. Lovely. Right, so it's recording now. I wonder, is it actually going to play back or not? So let's stop this. Stop this. Rewind it. And now turn on my speakers again. And let's press play. Anything actually recording? No, so it might not necessarily be on the right pins. I'm just kind of really guessing, aren't I? But the needles are definitely moving, so the sound's going into it. Let's just turn it over, make sure the, uh, make sure the tape itself is working. No. Oh, there we go. Now, now let's have a listen. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's loud, hold on. That's it, isn't it? That was it. But it's... Sounds awful though. I wonder is that because of I wonder could that be tape quality? Could that be my leads? Or because it definitely doesn't sound like that when I've got it through the headphones. Or I wonder is it a fault with the actual equipment itself? Whoa. 
brilliant. See, I don't really fully understand it. Maybe, maybe it also needs something over these pins here, or maybe I've got it connected up. Maybe I've got it connected up wrong, or maybe I've got it connected up right, and maybe because all, all the capacitors are getting so old, it's just distorting the sound, but 100% that is recording. There you go. When after a campaign... No, it's still distorted. Okay, well, I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave the recording as it is because there's too many variables that I'm not uh, not sure about. But as far as playing is concerned, it sounds good. So let's finish up this video now. Let's change location. Let's change the speaker. Put a better speaker on it, and uh, let's do the final uh, the final play of the music. So there we have it, all finished in its 1970s glory. Now this isn't the ending of the video that I wanted. I was going to play you out with some nice music. I did do that. I edited up the video. I uploaded it to YouTube. And then, of course, a claim came in from one of the songs on here. Didn't realise it was actually done by Sony. So, uh, yeah, not in the public domain. Right, OK. So I'm going to have to just play out with nothing, just with arches on there. And that's the way it goes. If I was to leave the song on there, they would get all the money for this video. And unfortunately, I'm trying to fix videos. that They make next to no money anyway. Pretty much most trying to fix videos don't actually cover the price of the item I'm doing, unless the item I'm doing is five, six, or seven pound, or unless the item I'm doing maybe gets fifty thousand views or more. But that's just not the case on these uh, trying to fix videos. They're just dying, dying a complete and utter death. But that's a, a conversation for another video, unfortunately. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to have to play you out with uh, the archers, <laughs> which is just what I always do on my Walkman videos. Anyway, look, check out the switch. It's working okay, and then to turn it off, a nice little flick and it goes off. So I'm going to keep that switch as it is. If I was to ever sell this, obviously I'd have to replace that because it's a bodge job. Now, uh, open it up, pop the tape in. I've got my little Bose speaker connected, even though there's no need because the quality is going to sound awful anyway, and because it's just the archers. Business I've already got. And I don't want to sell up the riding stables, it's too much a part of my life. Oh, yes, of course. But what I can do is work on young horses and then offer them for sale. And you can still and point to point them. There we have it. So pause works. Fast forward works. I bet he's And rewind works. I'll make the time. And we already know that record works as well. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that is it for this video. Again, I think quite an interesting one. And again, B&O products don't really, I haven't been let down by them yet and they always seem to make an interesting video. So I have actually got another one now, another tape cassette player, but I think this one is about 10 years later. So maybe I'll try to do that in the next couple of weeks or so. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give a big thumbs up and please subscribe for more trying to fix videos. Take care. Bye now.